Hello students, the purpose of this video is just to give a couple of MLA reminders and refreshers specifically for ENG 112. After grading your thesis statement and sample paragraphs assignments, I noticed that a couple of folks are still struggling a little bit when it comes to MLA citation. And so I wanted to give you a few pointers before you submit your MLA profession analysis paper. I'm going to show you the best places to navigate in the Purdue OWL in order to help you succeed a little bit better. The first section that I absolutely 100% want you to take a look at, if you haven't already, is the MLA Works Cited page basic format. Please read through these bullet points. They give crucial information and nuances that are related to MLA citation with your work cited page. Remember, citations, whether it's MLA, APA, Chicago, any of them, it's all about the details. And it's very important that you write down these details so that way they are not missed whenever you submit an assignment. Okay, so please read through this. The next section that I want you to read through is the MLA Works Cited Electronic Sources. And I want you to read through these two top sections thoroughly. The best practices for managing online sources, and then the important note on the use of URLs in MLA, okay? If I scroll down, I want to take a moment to talk you through how to cite an online scholarly journal through a database. If I keep on scrolling, I will find just that. And I have my template here that I can copy and paste and then put my own information. Many of you are finding your sources through ProQuest, which is an awesome resource to use. I'm so happy that so many of you are doing that. I just wanna take a moment to break down exactly how to cite something whenever you find it in ProQuest, okay? Again, I am on the Purdue OWL and I'm on the MLA Works Cited Electronic Sources. I'm going to scroll down until I find an article from an online database. ProQuest is an online database, which is why I'm referencing this. Okay, let us take a look at the ProQuest example. Seems to be the most appropriate, right? We have the author's last name, comma, their first name, period. Now, if I have two authors, it is going to look like this. I still have the first author's last name and their first name, comma, and this second author gets their first name put first and then their last name. Again, that's a nuance that you can read about when you're looking at the basics of a works cited page. Okay, so something to keep in mind. If you have three or more authors, then you are going to write the last name and the first name of the first author that you see, and then comma et all period. Okay. All of the information that I'm telling you right now can be found under Works Cited Page Basic Format, okay? If I scroll back down, I'm gonna look again at my example. The article name is in quotation marks, Love and Courtship in Mid 20th Century England. It has a period at the end of it, along with the end quotation mark. Historical journal is the scholarly journal for which it originated. This article does not come from ProQuest. ProQuest is just the database that has 
a bunch of articles in it. But ProQuest didn't produce the article itself. It came from the historical journal. And that is italicized. I'm then going to put a comma, the volume number, if I have it, comma, the issue number, if I have it, comma, the date of publication. Sometimes this is more specific. Instead of just a year, it's the month or the month, the date, and the year. The page numbers. Notice here how it says 173 to 96. What this means is that it is actually pages 173 to 196. Okay, we just are going to take off that one that goes in front of the 96 if it's in that similar page range. I then have a period followed by the name of the database itself in italics, ProQuest, comma, and then the DOI if I have access to the DOI, period. And then, of course, I'm going to put my access date in MLA format, which is the day, the month, followed by the year. All MLA citations end with a punctuation mark. So that's important to keep in mind. Now, what happens if you don't have the DOI? It's OK. You still need to put the URL so that way the reader of your essay can easily access the article. Okay, what does that look like? You can see it right up top here. It is very important that you delete the HTTPS from your link because that is not required in MLA. Okay, it's just www wherever your source may go. I hope that helps a little bit when it comes to understanding how to cite something from an online database. The next component of MLA that I want to take the time to uh, remind you of or refresh your memory is with a television show or a movie. Now, how to cite a film or a television show can be found under MLA Works Cited, Other Common Sources. I'm going to scroll down until I come to a film or a movie, okay? And this is typically how it is cited. Again, I can copy and paste this put it into my essay, my work cited page, and then fill out the information um, according to my own movie, right? Now, you may be asking yourself, okay, so I have the citation, right? It's based off of this format. Now, how do I do an in-text citation exactly? Remember that in-text citations, are all about taking the first piece of available information within the citation and then putting it in parentheses, okay? So the first piece of information that I have is the movie itself. Therefore, whenever I am citing this in my actual paper, I'm going to put Speed Racer in parentheses, and it's going to be italicized as well because it's italicized down here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the timestamp of wherever that scene that I'm talking about occurred. The timestamp is not italicized. And then I'm going to have my end parenthetical. Okay, so in the parentheses, I have Speed Racer italicized. And then the timestamp, which is not italicized. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, now what about television shows? Television shows work a little bit differently. If I am referencing the entire television show, the entire series, then I'm going to cite it just as they have here. I have the creators last name, first name. The second creator is goes by first name, last name. The name of the show 
is in italics, period, production company, comma, and then the year that the show concluded. Okay, and then as I mentioned before, all MLA citations end with a punctuation mark. Now, what if you're referencing a specific episode? This is great. You should be referencing specific episodes that have specific scenes within them, okay? I'm going to just scroll down to the next entry where I have a specific performance or aspect of a TV show, i.e. an episode, okay? This is the same TV show, it's Parks and Recreation, the same example, but it cites a specific episode. In this case, the episode title goes in the very beginning and it's in quotation marks. Then we have a punctuation mark here, we have a period, followed by the name of the show, which is still in italics, the creators, the performance by Amy Poehler, you do not have to put a performance if you're not referencing a specific performance. Then we have the season number and the episode number. These should be in your works cited entry, okay? This is great information to have for your reader. And then we have the name of the production company followed by the specific year that the episode actually aired. Because remember, Parks and Recreation ended in 2015, but 94 Meetings, this particular episode, took place in 2010. And again, you may be asking yourself, okay, now I'm really confused. How do I do the in-text citation if I'm quoting from a specific episode? Glad you asked. The same rule applies all across the board for MLA. It is the first piece of information that you can gather from your works cited entry. So if we're looking at this works cited entry, then 94 meetings, the episode title in quotation marks is what is going to go in my parenthetical citation followed by my timestamp. For example, let's say I have a quote from this specific episode, right? And then I have the end quotation mark. In the parentheses, I'm going to put 94 meetings in quotation marks. And then I'm going to have the timestamp right next to that. And then I'm going to close my parenthetical citation. Okay. So again, very similar to a movie. We're not italicizing or anything like that. We're not putting in the um, show title, Parks and Recreation is nowhere to be found in our in-text citation. Instead, we are just referencing the episode title, okay? And then another question that I get as far as MLA and abbreviations in general, let's say that you are doing a show such as How to Get Away with Murder. That is a very long TV title. And you probably don't want to write that throughout your entire paper. Instead, you can actually just abbreviate it um, in your introduction. So for example, if I pull up Microsoft Word, show you a blank document then if I'm talking about how to get away with murder and it's italicized because that's the name of the TV series, then I can just as easily do this and use the first letter of each word and just like that, I can reference the TV series throughout my entire paper. And I can say in How to Get Away with Murder, the main character, whatever it may be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and italicize that. So for those of you with particularly long 
TV series names or movie names, you can certainly use that tool in order to give your typing hands a little bit of a break. Okay, so I hope this has helped to clarify a couple of things. If you still have questions, you know how to reach me. Just shoot me an email. All right. Thanks for listening.